Welcome to the U.S. Department of Energy's Clean Energy Application Center webinar titled Combined Heat and Power, Basics and Benefits. I'm Krishnan Umamayashwar and I work at the Clean Energy Application Center and primarily I'm responsible for project support and other technical assistance with regards to CHP. The Gulf Coast Application Center is located within the Houston Advanced Research Center in the Woodlands, Texas. At this point, you should see the title slide of our presentation. If not, try restarting your browser and logging back in. Due to the large audience today, we will mute the phone receiver so that you can hear us, but we cannot hear you. At any point during the webinar, you can submit questions by typing into the chat field and clicking the submit button. Please do not uh, click the raise your hand button. We will respond to all questions offline and post the Q&A on the website as well. Also, please feel free to contact any of us by email if you have any questions regarding CHP. Our contact information will be provided at the end of the webinar. In today's webinar, we will first look at the overview and background of uh, combined heat and power, including the U.S. Department of Energy's 2030 vision. We will then define and characterize CHP, drill down to the fundamental schematic of CHP systems, components, prime movers, and heat recovery basics and applications. Subsequently, we will talk about the principal benefits of combined heat and power, present case studies of CHP installations in Texas, and leave you with resources and contacts for more information in regards to CHP. Let's begin by examining the efficiency of the central station model, commonly known as the electricity grid. This schematic summarizes how electricity is produced and how it is finally consumed. On the left in blue, you can see the typical fuel mix, which as you can see is heavily dominated by coal, comprising about 51% of the fuel supply. On the bottom right of the diagram, you will find in yellow the end use of this energy input in the residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation sectors, respectively. Now, if you focus your attention on the upper right-hand corner, in red, you will find conversion losses or heat that is exported from these distant power plants. As one can easily discern from this diagram, the net efficiency of the grid is roughly 30%. In other words, 70% of the input energy is not utilized. A bulk of this waste is in the form of wasted heat, and a small portion of this is due to transmission and distribution losses. This huge inefficiency in the grid has not gone unnoticed by the Department of Energy. And as a result, the DOE has set an aggressive target of CHP adoption for 2030. Today we are at 85 gigawatts or 9% of the electric generation capacity. The DOE has set a CHP target of 241 gigawatts, which translates to CHP comprising of 20% of the entire electrical gener electricity generation capacity in the country by 2030. That is almost a triple CHP adoption in 20 years. Effectively, this translates to an annual carbon dioxide reduction of 848 million metric tons or an equivalent of 154 million cars that can be taken off the road. This huge increase in CHP adoption is basically envisioned across all markets. The markets have been classified by DOE as large CHP markets comprising of plants greater than 20 megawatts, 
the middle-sized markets ranging between 1 to 20 megawatts and the small-sized CHP markets which comprise of systems less than 1 megawatt. In terms of new CHP installation, basically this means that uh, we expect 1,600 new systems being built in the large industrial market, 10,000 new systems in the fast growth market, and 50,000 new CHP systems in the emerging or small CHP market. Now, in order to accomplish this, this target, clean energy application centers were established across the nation by the Department of Energy in a manner such that each of the states was catered to by one of these application centers. This webinar is being brought to you by the Gulf Coast Clean Energy Application Center, whose mission is to develop regional strategies to support CHP, waste heat recovery, and district energy in Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. Primarily, the center engages in three key activities. One, education and outreach in the form of workshops, webinars, newsletters, and the website. Two, project support that uh, basically entails audits, feasibility studies, and other forms of technical assistance, and policy development in the form of legislative and regulatory, regu regulatory issues with the various agencies on a state level. Now let's take a brief, before diving into CHP, let's look at what is there already in Texas. Um, Texas leads the U.S. in installed CHP capacity. Um, it's highly concentrated in combustion turbines. Large systems predominate. And uh, there is a strong preference for natural gas. On the lower right, you find a bar chart which compares Texas as a percentage of the total CHP capacity in the U.S. Effectively, that means that it's a roughly, as of today, it's about 23% of, of the total CHP in the USA. But there exists a tremendous potential um, in all three markets in Texas, and there have been several studies with regards to that. Now let's look at the impact of the Texas CHP fleet. It, it's an estimated annual energy savings of 0.46 watts. And in terms of fossil fuel savings, that is comparable to the amount of fossil fuel saved by the entire Texas nuclear fleet. Another anecdote is that it saved five times the fossil